You say there's no global contagion from Argentina, but it is part of the wall of worry that investors face. Why does the Argentina default, whether S&P says it defaulted or Argentina claims it didn't, matter for markets and for investors? Well, I mean, it matters for markets and investors. First of all, this morning we're going to see is to meet to decide whether there was a failure to pay uh, and whether, therefore, uh, uh, CDS that uh, represent over a, a notional uh, billion dollars of Argentine debt uh, have been triggered, which, by the way, are, Argentina is already the world's most expensive sovereign debt to insure. And so that would, that would end up being somewhat problematic, certainly for the country, to some degree for its trade partners. I don't think globally it really has much impact. Uh, that said, uh, it really is... The, occurring in an already faltering an economy, mm -hmm. in an already faltering region. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just adding fuel to the fire of, of concern. Give us some context here, because we talk about how Argentina has not been part of the global capital markets for 13 years now. What is it missing out by uh, not having access to that foreign capital? Well, over the past five years, they've left about $50 billion of foreign direct investment on the table if they were at foreign direct investment levels equal to their peers. Um, by not paying uh, the settlements and having access to global capital markets, they've lost uh, over the next 10 years probably around 70 billion dollars to GDP at a time 70 billion. 70 billion at a time where GDP is already faltering. In fact, GDP uh, is going to contract for the first time since 2002 this year. Debt to GDP has increased. Uh, since 2011 from about 42 percent, so relatively low, to over 45 percent. And this is going to get far worse. You've got to remember that not only will the debt-to-GDP number rise as, uh, as the debt levels rise, but also as GDP falls. Mm -hmm. They've got a real issue here that ultimately, if it's not cured, will put them back on the path to a 1989-91 style crisis, ah. which is not the default crisis. That's where internal debt caused them in 1989 to devalue by 50 and a half percent in in July another 35 percent in December Josh, I gotta I gotta stop you for a minute you mentioned um, ISDA the International Securities Dealer Association meeting today to determine whether there's a default the Supreme Court has already said Elliott Associates Elliott management is due money that money wasn't paid how could there possibly be any conclusion other than default well I, I find that hard to believe and, and hard to understand as well especially when you read the language the language says bondholders mm -hmm. the exchange bondholders have not been paid until the money is in their pockets and it clearly hasn't been because it's a bank of new york right. mellon so it seems to me pretty clear as well okay let me bring up a chart here this is the argentinian peso is just one indication of the trauma for argentina this goes back ugly. 20 years stability ugly then really ugly that's not logarithmic spence wouldn't let me do a log chart <laughs> on a friday michael spence is with us the laureate ken rogoff once wrote a monograph for the imf with 14 types of floating currencies is argentina part of the international system or are they so outside of it we can separate them from any potential contagion no no the, the, i think they're um, they're in the system, at, you know, not completely, but but they haven't. They're, they're not completely disconnected. Mm -hmm. People are investing there. Other Latin American countries are investing there. Important country companies are located there, like Mercado Libre, which is the eBay kind of Amazon of Latin America. It so they're, no, they're not disconnected. What they are is uh, going off on the wrong course in terms of economic Should policy. Should the IMF step in here as they have many times before? N no, I don't think so. I, I, I mean, it, you know, there's no fundamental basis for an agreement right now. Uh, you know, Argentina has to turn around and move in a different direction before the IMF has a way to, to help out. Josh, help us out here as we look out um, into next week. What is the single event you'll be watching for that could make things worse before they get better? Well, first of all, we're going to watch the ISTA judgments, and I think that's important. Second, if they don't sit down and negotiate a settlement within the next 60 days, you're going to trigger uh, the cost default clause, which ultimately could lead to an acceleration on payments to those 93 percent who did take part gotcha. in those agreements, which would wipe out the entire foreign reserves of the central bank. Um, and then beyond that, I think we've got other significant problems because, ironically, the exchange bondholder clauses from 05 and 2010 also have the same pari passu language, uh. okay, that was included in the suits that Elliott and, and others won. So I think we could end up with a whole new round of litigation by the other 93% if they don't cure quickly.
Sounds ugly, doesn't it? It does sound ugly. Then again, it also sounded ugly when we were talking Greece and we got through that, so this is true. hang in there. Greece decided to be part of a solution and really worked with creditors. We've seen the exact opposite behavior here. Uh, belligerence. Yeah, but it's still, remember, it's still small, yeah. like Greece. It's not going to destabilize the global system.